two, one. Welcome to Follow the Action. I am John Layfield, proud to be part of this Follow the Action crew. If you watched or listened to our show last week, you got a pocket full of money because our guys killed the NFL, gave out winners in golf, gave out winners in college football. Our show, Follow the Action, is now nationally syndicated on radio. You can get it on the YouTube channel, Follow the Action, also on Apple or Spotify. We've been downloaded in over 2,000 cities, over 60 countries, and all 50 states for a very simple reason. We don't have guys who play experts on television. We got the legends and the icons, the pillars of the industry who have moved big money and lines for decades. So let's get right to these legends and these icons, and there's none bigger. He's been called the best sports better alive. He is fighting out of the city of brotherly love. He is known as the Philly Godfather, Mr. Steve Maltepis. And when you say legend and icon, that's only because you don't have any words that are more grand than that. He is known simply as the Philly Rooster. Two things in Philadelphia that you have to have. You have to have a cheesesteak, and you got to have Harry Mays. He is the host of Swing It and Ding It. It's the best golf podcast on God's green earth. He has been known, and he is the best combat sports handicapper in the world since he handicapped the very first UFC one lines. They've been called the future of sports betting. You will find out that they are. It's the man known simply as the eight ball and representing the college kids, Matt Maltepis. Last week, college football on this show, Harry Mays and the Philly Godfather said bet roll tide. They said bet the over. I bet it. I teased it. I parlayed it. I, Nick Saban walked away with his seventh national championship. I walked away with a pocket full of money. Philly Godfather, you ready to do it all again? Let's go. Let's get ready to fire, baby. Let's go. We're ready. And the main thing for this show is Philly Rooster. You got your wine? I'm ready to go. Let's do it, guys. For those that can't see, Philly Rooster came handy with a bottle of wine. <laughs> it looks it's glass, <laughs> but it's, it's a bottle that's behind it. So let's get started right away. We've also got with our show, we are proud to have Mr. Dave Mason from Bet Online. Mr. Mason is, if you're watching on video, he's not there because apparently he's so good looking, he makes you go blind. He's like Michelangelo's statue of David. He's a freaking masterpiece. We're now getting started with Mr. Dave Mason, who will give us the odds, the sharp money, and the public movement. Start with the NFL Saturday. We're going to cover all the NFL games. We're going to cover the UFC the golf in Hawaii, Mr. James Harden, and a great college basketball future that I know the Philly Godfather has five dimes on because I saw the betting slip because I follow him on Twitter. Game number 301 and 302 of your sports betting screen. It is the Los Angeles Rams versus the Green Bay Packers. Dave Mason from Bet Online. Where you got the money and what are the odds? Current odds are Packers are laying six and a half. The money line's minus 300 Green Bay, plus 250 for the Rams and over under at 45 and a half. The betters are on the Packers big. Lots of early volume. This game's going to be a huge decision. 71% of the early cash is on Green Bay. Once again, currently minus six and a half. 66% of the money line action is also on Green Bay. Once again, minus 300. And under is the public play so far. 73% of the early cash is on the under. We did take some sharp action on the Rams at plus seven. Philly Godfather, you were part of the crew that absolutely killed it last week in the NFL. What do you got in this matchup with uh, Mr. Aaron Donald, who's listed as questionable? Cup is listed as questionable. Joff still battling that thumb injury against the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, there's, like Dave said, there's some early sharp money that nibbled on the Rams plus seven. And uh, as we all know, the seven is so powerful in the NFL. But my, but in my opinion, it's not as powerful as Aaron Rodgers in uh, Lambeau Field, uh, the frozen tundra. I mean, I'm hoping this line keeps dropping. And I know Rooster's probably going to be on the other side, so he's not going to let me live this down if I lose this, lose this wager. But I like the Packers here, man. The Rams won a dogfight last week against a division opponent. Uh, you know, they're really banged up going into this week's game. Uh, you got a soft West Coast team with uh, an in, uh, with an even softer quarterback in Jared Goff, who's banged up. He's nursing an injury. He always seems to fold like a cheap suit under pressure in cold weather. Uh, then you had the fact that the Rams' best defensive player, uh, his status on the on the injury report isn't really ideal for this team right now. Even though 
more than likely he's going to play. I mean, I mean, he's a monster. He, he's as tough as they come, but he's not going to be a hundred percent. Like you said earlier, John, uh, Cup's banged up, Cops banged up, Donald's banged up. Their backup quarterback is banged up. And you know who's 100% healthy? Aaron Rodgers. I'm looking to lay six uh, on the Packers here. Uh, to me, Goff is definitely good for at least one interception. So that instant, instantly knocks like three points off the price because, you know, every turnover is worth about three points to the point spread. I think the Packers went easily here by two touchdowns or more. It'll kill all the teasers. Um, I like the Packers here. They're the best in the business in the red zone scoring uh, numbers. Uh, the Rams really struggle in that department. The field shrinks. The pressure rate rises. Uh, Goff seems to struggle. And on defense, the Packers ha actually have a better uh, opponent red zone scoring uh, defense than the Rams do. So I like the Packers. I think it's an easy win for me. Uh, call me a square. I know the public's going to be all over the Packers here. I like Green Bay. Rooster, it is going to be 31 degrees. It's a 4.40 p.m. game, so it may not be the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, but it is going to be cold. Do you agree with the Philly Godfather here on the Packers winning uh, easily and covering? Well, as you know, I always love to disagree, but in this case, I just can't. I have to agree with pretty much everything he said. First of all, Goff's not used to playing in the cold. He comes from Cal. Wolford, who has a neck injury, he played for uh, Wake Forest, which is in North Carolina. It's chilly down there, but it doesn't get 20 degrees. I'm hearing high 20s. By the end of the game, it's going to be mid 20s. So it's going to be colder than you thought. And it, to me, it, 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 it bottom, the bottom line is two matchups here, Rams, Ramsey and Adams and Lindsley and Donald. Now, Donald's banged up. And nobody's been able to stop Adams. Now, Ramsey, of course, he's a shutdown corner. But the way they move Adams around that line, he starts from so many different spots. I don't know how they're going to keep Ramsey on him. I agree with the godfather here. I, I think this is an easy win for the Packers at home. It's a great spot for them. And uh, I think Rodgers moves on here. Matt Maltepe is uh, representing the college kids. Are you going with your fellow Philly natives there with uh, the Green Bay Packers and the frozen tundra? Actually, I like the Rams plus seven. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I like the Rams this fight. I, I respect Rooster's opinion, fight PGF. But Bakhtiari's not going to be playing for the Packers, left tackle for the Green Bay Packers. It's going to be big for this team. Uh, I think he tore his ACL, did something to his knee. And the fact is, this Rams defense is playoff defense. They're meant for these type of games. Despite golf being, you know, a little banged up, he should be getting better as the week progresses. That's what I'm hearing from uh, the Rams. But the problem here is Rodgers doesn't lose at Lambeau. So I think that key number of seven is going to be huge here. I do like the Rams plus seven. We talk about uh, we talk about it before we got on the show about a teaser. I know Harry Mason has a teaser on the Green Bay Packers. I've got a teaser that Philly Godfather gave out this past week, and that was a uh, roll tide and Green Bay. We've already got the roll tide. They can cover that easy. That receiver is just out of this freaking planet. But Harry Mays, I understand you also have some type of teaser on the Green Bay Packers. What is it? Yeah, I got much respect for this Rams defense, but with Donald being hurt, I got, I got to take the Packers and I'll just you know, get some insurance and roll them back down to, you know, minus one or minus a half, and I'll roll them into some exotics with the Ravens and the Chiefs. Well, let's go to the next game. What you're talking about is the Ravens uh, playing the Bills, and that is uh, game number 303 and 304 on your sports betting screen. It is going to be an 8.20 p.m. game on Saturday night. Mr. Dave Mason from Bet Online, where do you have the odds and where do you have the money going? Current odds are Bills minus two and a half, Lane minus 119. Uh, money line minus 145, take back is plus 125 on the Ravens. Over under 50. Uh, about 58% of the early cash is on the Bills, 54% of the money's on the Ravens plus 125, and 70% of the action is on the over. We do have some sharp action on the Ravens at plus three. Eight ball, I know you had a lean on this game. Probably the best uh, quarterback run I've ever seen, that 48-yard uh, TD run last week by Lamar Jackson. What do you got in this game, eight ball? I love the Bills in this game. Uh, you're getting one of the hottest offenses in the league, laying two and a half at home. They have a 8-1 and record at home this year, which I think is the best in the league. It's going to be cold temperatures, and it's supposed to be 50% snow, I think, so it's going to be snow snowing early in the game. Lamar Jackson, he's never played in a snowy game in his career. So I think it's an opportunity to take the Bills here at home. They've been pretty much unstoppable. Harry, are you in agreement with that? I know you had a lean on uh, this game. 
Yeah, I do. And I'm not in agreement with that. I, I, I was not impressed with the Bills in their win last week. They were up 24-10 in that game. Reich made a ton of mistakes. They should have buried that team. He had uh, one, of the, one of his worst games as a head coach uh, in the NFL, and they still found a way to get back in the game with a chance to, to either tie it or win it at the end. So I was not impressed with what Buffalo did. I'm curious to know if McDermott is going to channel Jim Johnson, his mentor of years ago with the Eagles, who was tremendous against running quarterbacks because he would not put a spy player on him. He would put guys and they'd spy separate different zones to keep Vic in, you know, contained inside between the hashes. If that happens, this could be a problem for Baltimore, but I like Baltimore. I mean, the snow does not scare me in an iota. Lamar Jackson can run in snow. He can't throw in tropical weather, but he can run in snow. This Baltimore team against the, their running game is unbelievable. The Bills, you know, I know they're 10 and one, their last 11, their run defense is one of their few weaknesses. And they gave up 164 yards last week uh, to Indianapolis. That's 5.4 yards a crack. Uh, they got the better kicker. I know he missed one last week. That's his miss for the playoffs. He will not miss again. Baltimore plus the two and a half. I'd ra rather have three, but I'm taking the Ravens. Harry brings up a great point with a single spy here. I think uh, you put a single spy out there. You better have a prime time Deion Sanders in his prime. Yes. <laughs> Catch Lamar Jackson. The zone spy, I think, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Matt, are you going with this as well with uh, Lamar Jackson, or are you going with the Buffalo Bills? I'm not going with Lamar Jackson. First off, I don't trust him in the playoffs. Second of all, in the snow, it's going to be hard to make those sudden movements side to side, those juke movements in the snow, in you know, rough conditions. And if you limit that, you limit his ability to run. And then that means the linebackers and the quarterbacks, they're at the same pace, same speed. If you slow down his speed, uh, both of these teams are really good teams. They both outperformed the market all year. But to me, the Bills are the better team. If you notice, at the end of the year, they got healthy, and we saw their defense started to play like really good. And I think they're going to continue here to play well. And I think the Bills come up come out here and they win this game. Philly Godfather, we got a little difference of opinion. Can you settle it here? This game is really tough to handicap, especially uh, for someone like me. I got futures on the Bills at the beginning of the year, so I'm trying to look at this game as objectively as possible. I'm trying to talk myself into the Ravens because I am holding that ticket. And like I said, you guys know how bullish I've been on this Bills team all year. Uh, but if you read between the lines and handicap the market, the early, you know, the early price odds makers pop this number, uh, basically begging for Bills money. Uh, the soft opener had a 13 3 Buffalo Bills team. What, what did it open up, Dave? Two and a half. Would they buy it up to three? Uh, yep. And but then the next thing you know, uh, you know, as soon as it opened up, you saw the market react. We witnessed some, you know, some big love for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Uh, they hit the screen. They stomped that price all the way down to a pick em. This game went all the way down to a pick em. Uh, but before you knew it, it shot right back up to two and a half. Now it's juiced, minus 15, minus 20. Uh, it's basically been stabilized at two and a half, but I think it's going to continue to rise. Uh, when we break down the metrics on these teams, the Bills are the better team offensively. Obviously, everyone knows that. They're better in yards per play, yards per pass attempt metric. Buffalo has the better quarterback, in my opinion, better offensive line. They're slightly better in the red zone scoring percentage on the year. Uh, and over recent play, they're number one in red zone scoring while the Ravens' red zone scoring has decreased. Obviously, the Ravens are probably the best rushing team in the NFL this year. But as we all know, Lamar Jackson is responsible for about 33% of that uh, rushing produ production for this team. I think he had about, what, 1,000 yards rushing this year. So they're not a true um, uh, pound and ground team when it comes to running the ball. Uh, I can keep going on about, you know, the Ravens' overall defensive metrics, how they're only three spots better than the Bills on the year in overall defensive efficiency. But to be off, uh, to be completely honest, I don't think this Ravens' defense can slow down Buffalo's offense. I mean, Baltimore played only three teams this year that ranked in the top ten in overall defensive efficiency. They beat the Browns. They lost to the Chiefs. They lost to the Titans during the regular season before beating them, you know, last week. Uh, but the Titans' offense is more predicated on the run and they rely so much on Derrick Henry. So if you can key on Henry and stop him, you basically stop this that Titans uh, offense. The build offensive style, offensive scheme to me, is more similar to the Chiefs. I know the Ravens got, what, the 10th best uh, defense in the league this year. But how do you stop five different guys from catching the ball? You got Stephon Diggs, you got Beasley, you got Davis, you got Browns, and their tight end Knox. They can all kill you. There's just too many weapons 
on this offense for Buffalo. I mean, what, what's Baltimore going to do? They're going to dial up the blitz all game long. But jo- Josh Allen has been the best quarterback, maybe the second best this year against the blitz, against the pressure. I mean, he's killed it all year. He's got the fifth best offensive line in football to protect them. As of right now, I like the Bills, man. I'm not, I'm not going to get off my future. I'm not going to hedge. I think the Bills uh, roll on this team. Rooster, is uh, Lamar Jackson like uh, fine wine? Uh, he's not, actually. <laughs> like Philly Godfather said, now, the, pain, the, the Ravens already came out and said they're going to try to blitz the crap out of this team, which I hope they're lying because if they try that, it's going to be a bloodbath. And, you know, it's just a bad matchup for the Ravens. And I, I honestly thought the Ravens – they or I thought the Ravens were going to lose last week. So they they won their game. I think they're done. I love the Bills. I've loved them all year like the Philly Godfather. I think this is an easy win for them. Yeah, and, and think about it. They put up only 20 points against the Titans defense. It's, that's one of the worst in the NFL. And I know Harry was talking about the Colts game, but, but the Colts had the seventh best defense in the league this year. And if you look at the teams that the Ravens have played down the stretch, it's been a bunch of bad teams. And they've only played three teams with top 10 rushing defenses all year. So their metrics are slightly skewed. We all know how great Lamar Jackson is. We, we all know you can't let him get to the outside. But in a bad weather game, I think he's played in one bad weather game all year this year. That was against the Patriots. And as a seven-point favorite, they lost outright in that game to a Patriots team that, that really wasn't that good. But if you scheme the right way in bad weather, he's not going to beat you with his arm. And I think, I think the Bills is the right side We'll come back to the two uh, NFL games on Sunday at the end of the show. We've got uh, going to Fight Island next. But for, before we do, we got huge news coming out in the NBA. James Harden is going <laughs> – boy, as a Texan, I'm uh, kind of happy to see him go. I'm not helping pack his bags. Uh, <laughs> good grief. Guy plays defense like I do, which I'm a 54-year-old <laughs> man, so that tells you how well I play defense. Uh, let's go to uh, Matt Maltepe. So you're an NBA expert along with 8-Ball. What do you see as far as this game? But before we do, Dave Mason, you have the odds on what this has done to futures and to betting. What are those, Dave? Yeah, uh, the Nets moved. Uh, they moved significantly, significantly obviously. Uh, Atlantic Division, they went from plus 125 to minus 150. Eastern Conference from plus 275 to uh, plus 135. And then to win it all at the end of the year from plus 650 to plus 275. Matt, what have you got on this? So James Harden's finally reuniting with Kevin Durant back on the same team. And they have also have Kyrie Irving. But the problem is Kyrie Irving, he has some issues where I don't know what's going on with him. He's not showing up for these games. He's not really giving the, his team a reason why. It's very chaotic. Uh, they're saying that reports that Kyrie Irving has some issues with Kevin Durant. Their relationship isn't really well. And it's just a very chaotic environment. Now you add another player with, who has one of the highest usage rates in the NBA, three players with three of the highest usage rates in the NBA, and there's only one ball. So that there lies a the problem. But I, I can't put my money on this team to win it just because of the chaotic environment, what's going on. I don't even know if Kyrie wants to be on this team anymore at this point because before when he went to Boston, when he left Cleveland and went to Boston, it was because he wanted to be the number one guy. So now in Brooklyn, he was the number one, number two guy, this, that, with Kevin Durant. Now he's the number three guy. He's going to play third wheel. And I don't know how this is going to work out. It's going to be very chaotic, I think, in my opinion. Eight balls sounds like we got a bunch of prima donnas underneath uh, one roof. Uh, how, how does this play out? Well, there's a bunch of new pieces. You have the new head coach, first year head coach, Steve Nash. It usually doesn't work well when you put a bunch of new pieces together and they've got 60 games to figure it out. Obviously, they have the talent. Their roof is probably higher than, you know, their ceilings, probably higher than anyone else in the league right now. But like Matt said, Kyrie right now, no one knows what's going on with him. Does he want to be a third option? There's only one basketball. So I think it's going to be tough for them to put it all together this season. But they should end up in the conference finals playing either Milwaukee, Boston. So they'll go far this year. I do think, however, that the Rockets got some good compensation for them. They got – I think three or four first round picks, the right to swap four first round picks. They got uh, Aladipo, Exum, and I think I'm missing another player, but I think they got a good uh, compensation. What do you think, Gabe? Yeah, obviously they got the four first round picks. 
Uh, they got four other draft picks they can swap. They got Aladipo, so they definitely got a huge haul for him. Hey, Rooster, maybe everybody's just overthinking this. Maybe Kyrie Irving is just an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he is an idiot. Well, first of all, I was listening to talk radio in Philly all day, and it was imminent that Harden was coming to Philly. I mean, imminent. It, right. they, they basically announced that he was about to sign, and the Nets were out of it. So I was holding my breath, hoping he didn't, because I just think this kid is a punk, and he would have not fit in Philly at all. I don't know what Harry thinks, but I was relieved when all of a sudden breaking news came out that he was on the Nets. I, I don't want nothing to do with this guy. I think the Sixers have a good team. I love their shooters now. I, I don't know. The Sixers can make a run this year. Harry, you're never short of an opinion. You, know, you were called out there by the Philly Rooster. What do you think? Yeah, I, I – I have my issues with, with this Sixers team, and most of it centers around Ben Simmons, and I, I'm, I'm on record many times about it, including this morning, after he took two shots in a game you know, last night with uh, – they needed Embiid to play out of his mind to win in overtime. But that being said, I don't know that James Harden is the right guy. I mean, him – He's way overweight. I think his better days are way behind him, and the price would have been way too high because I like some of these younger players that the Sixers would have had to give up in the trade. Well, gentlemen, uh, let's go to uh, a place that is far, far away that may not have ever heard of James Harden. That is Fight Island. And uh, Mr. Joey Odessa, we are back with the UFC, and I understand you've got uh, several fights to break down. The main event is uh, Mr. Max Holloway against Calvin Qatar. Holloway is 21 and six. Qatar is 22 and four. It's a featherweight matchup. It is the main event. It is an early start time on Saturday. Uh, Dave Mason from Bet Online. Where do you have the money on this? Um, it's on Holloway. Uh, Max Holloway, the former champ. 63% uh, of the cash is on Holloway, and 64% of the betters are on him as well. The over under is pretty much split 50 50. We do have some sharp action on the other side at plus 145. Um, so that's why the, the odds have moved down a bit. But like I said last week, we're, we're expecting some sharp action to come in Holloway when if that price dips too much more. Joey, what's your take on this fight? Well, we talked about it last week. I guess some early money was on Qatar. You know, there's levels to this stuff. And Qatar, I mean, he's finished his last four guys. Uh, well, excuse me. He, the guys that Qatar has finished, Jeremy Stevens, Ricardo Lamas, uh, Fish Gold and Burgos. Burgos, I think, is pretty tough there. But you compare that to Max Holloway's last five fights, Volkanovski twice, Edgar, Poye, Ortega. Max had a 12-fight win streak going into this. Now, granted, Qatar's got momentum going here. He won his two bouts in 2020. I believe that Max is a better fighter. I think that Max is going to outwork him. You know, this, this UFC is going to be on ABC on free TV. And when the UFC match, made this matchup, they're looking for two guys that weren't going to go out there and end quick, you know, finish a fight quickly. They, neither of these guys has been KO. If you look back the first time uh, the UFC debuted on Fox, Cain Velazquez for Junior Dos Santos. Jo Junior Dos Santos ended him in like a minute in the first round. It was kind of a dud, you know, first, first time viewers. I mean, sure, the knockout's exciting. But with these two guys, Max has got, I believe Max has got like the highest punch output for anyone in the UFC. Now, granted, it helps that he had five round bouts in like his last six fights, but that's a, another another aspect of this game that Qatar hasn't had. Max has got experience in these five rounders. Max usually, and against Volkanovski, Max won the first two rounds of his last fight, dropped the next three, but Max has got some, you know, round three KOs. So I don't know what kind of Max is gonna show up here. If Max comes out, steps on the gas, I think he'll outwork Qatar, I think he'll beat Qatar. You got another fighter, no joy that you like. It's a middleweight matchup of undefeated fighters. It's Punaheli Soriano, who is seven and zero. He's a southpaw. Uh, he's only had one person that's gone the distance with him, fighting Dusko Todorovic. The Serbian is ten and zero. He's also only had one person go the distance with him, uh, six knockouts, three uh, submissions. Dave Mason from Better Line, where do you have the money and the odds on this? Uh, current odds are Todorovic is minus one fifty seven and. Soriano's currently paying out at plus 137. 62% uh, of the action are on the, is on the favorite. Once again, Todor Todorovic at minus 157. Enjoy. What do you have on this fight? I like Todorovic here. Uh, look, Soriano, Division Three wrestler, wrestled for Wardsburg in Iowa. I think it was 80 and 20, you know, 75% of his matches he won. Division Three school, good school. He was an All-American his senior year. I think he took seventh in the NCAAs in uh, 2014. 
I'm usually a fan of the wrestlers. This Sor this Soriano kid from Hawaii, his first name is Punta Hele uh, Soriano, <laughs> can punch, okay? But when you watch T Todorovic, moves his head, he's got good head movement. I think that Todorovic is a, uh, how do I, I would say that he's just, his movement on his feet, his head movement, his footwork, I think it's better than uh, than Soriano. I think if Soriano plants one on him, might you know, I mean, sure he's going to hurt him because the kid can punch. But I think Todorovic is the much better fighter here. I laid uh, what did I lay with him? A dollar fifty. Um, I don't know. I see him. I think he's better than two to one favorite. It's tough when two undefeated guys go and two you know guys that don't have a lot of UFC experience because you you know you have to gauge their talent against lesser opposition. But I think Todorovic is is more tested. I think Todorovic. Boy, I say that three times fast, but win that fight. You, a fight I know that you like, Joy. It's a welterweight matchup. We talked about it last week. I uh, heard you talk about it uh, in other places. David Zawada, the German, is 17-5 and five against Ramazan Emev, uh, who's 19-4, and four, South Paul, who is from Russia. This welterweight matchup. Uh, Dave Mason from Bet Online. where do you have the money and the odds, please? Uh, Emev is minus 258 favorite. Take back on Zawada is plus 218. Uh, we're we're going to need Sawada big. Uh, the 86% of the early cash is on Ameev. And, Joy, what do you have on this fight? Well, I bet Ameev. I laid minus 250 on Ameev. It's it's sitting around what day of amount? About around minus 260 right now? Yeah, minus 258. Yeah, I mean, it's a fair price for him. Look, Zawada's tough, man. German Zawada. He beat, uh, he beat Khabib Nurmagomedov's cousin in uh, by armbar. Stopped him in his last fight. You know, he got a little bit, I guess maybe that was a little bit of momentum. People look at it on paper. But the fact there is slow and steady wins the race. And that's what, how Amiv fights. Amiv, look, if there's going to be a stoppage in this fight, it'll have, well, you would think it would be Zawada winning. But Amiv, he just does what he has to do to win. Not overly exciting, but he's not, you know, he's not in there for those fight of the night bonuses. Goes out there, gets it done. I think Amiv will grind out a three-round decision. But I like Amiv to side. Well, you talk about fight of the night. Let's talk about knockout of the century because that is Joaquin Buckley uh, and the spinning back fist. And that video must have been seen 100 million times around the world. He's a 12 and 3 South Paul middleweight matchup fighting Alessio de Chirico. Uh, Chirico uh, is 12 and 5, the Italian, and this middleweight matchup. Dave Mason from Bet Online. Where do you have the money in the odds, please? Buckley currently minus 260, uh, plus 220 on de Chirico whatever the Chirico us uh, and 63% uh, of the action is on Buckley. Uh, he's a, he's a fan favorite now with all those highlight reel knockouts. So he's definitely getting most of the action. I'm just happy. I got the flag, right? The Italian flag, the Mexican flag. I looked this up just to make sure. Cause I saw that flag. I wanted to make sure joy made fun of me for the last two months over that. So uh, joy, <laughs> what do you have? That's At right. least we know that uh, Di Chirico can speak Italian and, uh, you know, Mexican. Mexican <laughs> Mexico is not a language. We got – you knew that. Uh, look, this fight, Buckley, you, you talked about it. Buckley, that – I mean, that was the, the shot heard around the world. Highlights everywhere. Buckley is tough, but Buckley is not – Buckley is not a minus two and a half to one favorite over Di Chirico here. The, uh, Alessio lost his last three fights. He's competitive, you know. You'd say, "Well, this looks pretty simple for uh, for uh, Buckley to win," but Di Chirico is tough, man. And and Buckley's just overpriced. I think this is kind of a toss-up fight, maybe 55, 45, 60, 40 at best. Numbers, guys. I mean, look, if you're betting value, and I always say people know the value of everything and the, and the or the the price of everything and the value of nothing, you know. I'm sucked into this, and I, and I'm sucked into a bet on, on Di Chirico. I think the Di Chirico plus money is is not a bad side to go in here with. Well, we got a, another. We have the main event is a featherweight matchup, and this fight is a featherweight matchup as well. It's Mr. Jacob Kilburn. He is eight and three, taking on Austin Lingo, both Americans, uh, seven one. Dave Mason from Bet Online. Where do you have the money and the odds, please? Uh, Lingo is minus two twenty, and Kilburn is plus one eighty five. Another lopsided fight with 89% of the early money is on Kilburn. And, Joey, what do you have on this? You know, those guys that bet Kilburn must not like money. Um, you know, with all due respect to Kilburn, he's he's just uh, – I just don't think he's UFC caliber. Um, look, Lingo, he came in – his last fight, he had some problems. He had to go – late notice and everything, had to go through all these uh, medicals and 
you know, he was exhausted. And that can take a lot out of a guy. But Jacob Kilburn is not any kind of a world beater here. Tennessee kid, eight and three, uh, three, three losses by submission. I think that Austin Lingo is going to stretch him. I think he's going to knock him stiff. I bet the under in this fight, I went under, uh, I went under two and a half in this fight. Uh, even money, which I surprised me. I mean, I expected to see like one and a half over maybe minus 140. And, uh, and I laid minus, uh, minus 210 on the, on the favorite. Austin Lingo, first bout of the night, tw- you know, 12 noon Eastern time. You know, sometimes I always say I should, you know, when I, those first bout of the nights, I'm like snake bit with. But I'm telling you that this Austin Lingo is a better fighter than Kilburn. I think Kilburn's training down in, uh, well, he's got a new team he's training with. I like, I like Lingo here. I think he gets it done, and I think he gets it done fast. Hey, Joey, just so uh, we have a lot of new uh, listeners out there because we're syndicating now on radio around the country, you don't like putting the two together. You don't like necessarily putting the under with the finish, either parlaying or combining that with the side that you like, right? Uh, well, you know, I've always been a, a one that, to say don't corner yourself into a, a method of victory. Now, if the number's way off, you know, if you look at the market and you see, you know, a price, I don't know what the price is by and by stoppage or, you know, a part, I think that you bet them both straight. I think that they'll win uh, as far as backing yourself into a corner. You know, it happens. These referees have a, a huge influence on these bouts, you know, verbal submissions, guys tapping, stoppages, strikes, submission. I, I just think you don't corner yourself in with a method of victory. I think that Lingo beats him and, and stops him early. Don't forget that uh, UFC this uh, week is on a very sh- uh, quick, short uh, start time, start time at noon uh, Eastern time because of the, the fight island. Uh, oh, special on uh, ABC. So let's go halfway around the globe to Hawaii. And uh, Mr. Harry Mays, Lanto Griffith was the big bet last week to finish in the top 20, and we cast a ticket on it. Uh, we have them this week still in the state of Hawaii, but at Wakalia Country Club in Honolulu, 13 of the top 30 players in the world are going to be there. Cameron Smith, the defending champion, is going to be there. It's a par 70, not a par 73. Right a much tighter course and a much flatter course. So you may not have shin splints from your fat golfers this week. <laughs> well, you know, that guy's not even playing. Patrick Reed's had enough. He's already headed back to the States after that uh, lousy round on Saturday that killed me. Uh, but yeah, the Sony open at YLI. This is one of my favorite golf courses uh, in the early part of the season. It's old school. It's Seth Rayner design uh, only about a little over 7,000 yards. Last week was 7,500 plus. This is a totally opposite type of, of golf course. It's, it's made for a, point A to point B kind of players, guys that can drive it straight in narrow fairways and then get their iron, hit their irons. This is an iron players golf course, only two par fives, like you mentioned, par 70. And uh, 11 under won this tournament last year. Now that's when the wind is really up. If the wind hits like it did on Sunday uh, at Kapalua, the scores won't be as high. But if, if if the wind lays down like it did for three rounds last week, you could have some really high scores. Webb Simpson is the current favorite. Uh, he actually bounced. He had a, a better week last week than I thought he would. Uh, he's plus 1,100. Harris English, the winner from last week, plus 1,300. Berger and Morikawa are the next favorites. I like Ryan Palmer this week is one of my plays to win. He's a guy who's won here before, and he also has three top tens at this golf course. This sets up perfectly for him. He actually, outside of a double bogey on the 11th hole on Sunday, he would have been in that playoff as well. Uh, for the, uh, the, the the century tournament last week, I also like him in a t- top ten at plus two seventy five. Like I said, he's plus three three thirty three hundred to win. Zach Johnson's another guy that I'm going to throw on. He always plays well here. He's a top twenty guy at plus two hundred. You know, just throw a little something on him. Abe Answer is another guy who'd be looking for his first win, and he's going to run it down this year. This guy can play. He hits it straight. And he's very fiery and competitive. And I think this is a good spot for him. Plus 225 and a top 10 is something that I've already put in. Charles Howell the third. They, they have a term, horses for courses, in, in the golf game. This guy has been top 10 in 10 of his last 19 appearances at this golf course. 13th or better in nine of his last 12. This is a DFS must play. And uh, top 20 plus 200 is, is an, I think, an easy bet. One of the other guys, though, I like to win is Colin Morikawa, plus 1,500 and plus 350 in a top five. He is the best iron player in this field. He finished 21st here last year. He finished seventh at, at the Century last week. If he gets the putter going rem- at all, it's his tournament. Well, 
you mentioned the uh, iron player and more call when you have a short course like this and a tight course like this is it more important to you the driving accuracy or is it more important to say a second shot course an iron play is more call this is a second shot golf course yeah but you, you can't you can't put it into the trees you gotta you don't the guys that drive it really long you really don't don't necessarily have a huge advantage here it's a second shot golf course that is the host of the best podcast on God's green earth, the golf <laughs> podcast. And that is swing it and ding it, uh, Mr. Harry Mays. And that uh, brings uh, us uh, back full circle to the NFL on Sunday, game number 307 and 308 on your sports betting screen. It is a 3.10 p.m. start on Sunday. It is the Cleveland Browns who won their first uh, playoff game and forever going against the Kansas City Chiefs. It's going to be cold, about 30 degrees is what I saw earlier today on the NFL weather chart. Uh, Philly, I'm sorry, Dave Mason, where do you have the money and the odds on this, please? Yeah, the Chiefs are currently favored by 10. The money line is minus 500 for the Chiefs and plus 30, 395 for the Browns. And the total is a healthy 57 and a half. Spread action, 55% of the cash is on the KC. 70% 70 of the cash is on KC minus 500 outright. And this total is going to be a massive sweat. 95% of the early bunny, and there's a lot of it, is on the over 57 and a half. Wow. A huge yeah. high over like that. 95% of the public money. Uh, Philly Godfather, what do you got on this game? Uh, the Cleveland Browns still have some magic left in them? I don't know, man. I mean, they looked so good against the Steelers, right? But a lot of that was based off of turnovers. But even when the Pittsburgh wasn't turning over the ball, you saw they could move the ball against the number one defense in the NFL this year. Uh, I think they're going to be able to put up some points. I mean, both these teams rank in the top 10 in, uh, yards per play metric and red zone scoring. I mean, every offensive category you can name, they're, they're both right there. Uh, I feel sorry for Dave Mason and Battle Line because uh, <laughs> there's also some sharp money. I mean, sharp money went over. 27 and a half in the first half. They bet the over in the game. So you got a combination of public money. You got a combination of sharp money together on the over here. I mean, 10 such a big number. Uh, Kansas City's pass rush hasn't looked the same this year like they did last year. So that's a little bit of a concern if you're looking to back uh, the Chiefs here. While Cleveland, their offensive line, I mean, it, it's gotten a lot better than it was last year. And it's evident in the turnover differential. Both these teams ranked in the top 10 in, in the turnover differential this year. So that's another reason why you know, the over is probably the right side here because you're not going to see – I don't expect too many turnovers here. Um, I hate to say it, but uh, I think the public's right on the over. Uh, the side, I want to take Cleveland, but before I do, I want to hear what Rooster's got to say. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thrill I get uh, recording this podcast is watching Rooster Greek his wine all during the podcast while I got him talking. It's just – just, yeah, yeah Ruth, I heard you laid 500 on the Chiefs. Is that true? <laughs> first of all, I made five more golf bets as Harry was talking. I just thank him. I picked him up a, a bottle of his favorite wine. A little booze. Booze <laughs> farm strawberry, which I'm going to drop off to him this week. Beautiful. Uh, did can you, you drink, can you drink that on ice? Can I drink yeah. that on ice? Rooster, did you get the paper bag for him to put it in so he feel more comfortable with it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you my take on this game. Um, I'm with the Philly Godfather here a little bit, but I actually like the Browns a lot. Wow. The problem is, I don't think the Chiefs, there's something does not look right with this team. That I, They can't cover, first of all. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I bet them, I think, four times this year. All four times I lost. Um, they, they can't cover a spread. They just can't seem to put it together. They're, they should be a better team. They're a better team on paper than they were last year. But in reality, when you watch them play, they are not a better team. I mean, the, the Browns scare me because their secondary is so bad. They're giving up over 300 yards a game, um, which, you know, obviously Mahomes should be able to capitalize on, and that's why everybody in the world is going over. But their run defense is weak, and we know Cleveland can run the ball. So – Four and a half yards of carry. I think they're going to average more like five and stay in this game. Now, obviously, I think the Chiefs will win, but I Andy Reid made a really bad decision here in sitting Mahomes the last game of the season. This is like a college layoff here to a bowl game. They're going to come out flat in the first half. And if what happens to Pittsburgh, where Cleveland picks up a couple big plays early, 
they could be in trouble. And Pittsburgh never recovered from that pouncy, um, horrible hike over the head trip. So <laughs> I think the game's going to be close. I think Cleveland will cover, but I, I do think the Chiefs will win the game. Harry, is Boone's Farm allowed on those fancy golf courses you go on? No, absolutely not. No, you'd have to bring that in in like a red solo cup or something and sneak well, that on your cart. I, I, I got to the Farm, but I am in Harry's honor wearing my Marion 2013 U.S. Open shirt. And Harry, I can get you on there whenever you want. Nice. Now, now keep in mind, that, that tells me you've had that shirt for eight years and it still fits. <laughs> <laughs> That's good work out of you. Now, you know, this game is is unbelievable because I like you, I could go either way on it. I was thinking about it all week, but that Browns team, you think, well, they may have already won their Super Bowl. It's their first playoff win since 1995. It was their first playoff game, uh, you know, in what, 15 years, whatever it was. And they beat the Steelers and they beat them up and they beat them in Pittsburgh. It's like, are they going to have anything left? But then you think their core of what they do is running the football and they've got a really good defensive front. And I think both of those things travel, and they'll travel in the playoffs. And I like Cleveland to keep this thing within 10 points. It, it, I, I'm going to probably take Kansas City maybe in a teaser too because I think they will win the football game. But 10 points with a great running game, uh, and, and they got a little bit of mojo right now. And Rooster's right. There's something not right with Kansas City. <clears throat> I, I don't know what it is. They haven't covered a game since the Jet game back in November 1st, I believe. It's like eight or nine in a row that they haven't covered. And you know, the slot receiver for Cleveland, we all know how good he is. They have trouble with the slot receivers, and they have trouble with running backs. So I'm going to take Cleveland. I'm going to take the 10. You didn't see it, Harry, but uh, Joey uh, hung his head in shame when he said the only team they covered against was the Jets. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, Joey. It's just true. It's the facts. <laughs> so, Matt, we've got uh, people on the dogs. We've got people on the points. Are you, are you in agreement with that? Or are you going to be the scenting voice here? Well, before I hit 10, we actually had a premium move on a teaser with KC under three. But at 10, it's tough, man. Uh the Browns, they're going to be able to run on this Kansas City team. The problem is, are you going to be able to stop Mahomes? That secondary has been weak. It's going to be a tough job for them. But if I had to bet on the line at 10, I'm taking the Browns because I think they'll be able to run on this team. Philly Godfather, you had mentioned sharp money was on the uh, the, the, the overs here in different halves and games. Were there any uh, sharp money as far as the team totals? And it was the reason I asked that is because who do they believe is going to be outside of their uh, average? Do they believe it's going to be the, the Browns that are going to score more than what they are projected to score or the Chiefs? Have you seen sharp money as far as the team totals? No, I haven't, Sean. Uh, I haven't seen, all I saw was the over, which makes a ton of sense. Uh, and I, I mean, the Browns. At 10, 10 and a half, you, you got to nibble a little bit on Cleveland here. Uh, they're playing with momentum. You saw what they did to that Ravens defense, even though they lost, uh, they put up 42 points. They beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. And Kansas City's defense isn't as good as either one of those two teams. So they're going to be able to put up some points. As long as Baker doesn't get a brain cramp and turn the ball over, they should be able to stay within that Vegas uh, closing number. Let's go to the last game uh, on Sunday night. It is a 6.45 p.m. game. It is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, game 307 and 308. As uh, the Philly Rooster loves to say, the GOAT, Tom Brady. No, he doesn't like to say that. I said that just a needle in just a little bit. Uh, taking on the Saints, uh, Dave Mason from Bet Online. Where do you have the money and the odds, please? Current odds, Saints are laying three. The money line is minus 159. And take back on the Bucks is plus 139. Over under 52. Uh, Action is pretty even. 54% of the cash is on Tampa Bay plus three. 53% of the action is on the Buccaneers. At pl Actually, no, no, New Orleans uh, minus 159. And the total was split 50 52s. We took some sharp action on the Bucks at plus four. Well, Rooster, uh, two 40 plus year old quarterbacks. So who you got in this matchup? Well, this is a tough one. I, I mean, I think this line's very close to being right on the number if the Saints truly had a, a home field advantage, which they don't. As we know, the home field advantage is out the window. So I honestly think this game should be closer to a pick. I can make, I can sit here and make really strong arguments with a bunch of statistics for both of these teams. But in the end, I really think the Taysom Hill thing 
since Breeze went out, has not worked. Hill tried to pass a long pass last week, ended up getting sacked, fumbled the ball, was a disaster. It could have been worse. Um, that that back and forth, which was great before Breeze got hurt, does not seem as smooth to me now. And I don't think Breeze is happy about it because Hill played so well when he was out. Now, obviously, Breeze is comfortable. He's retiring anyway. But I just want – I think he wants all the credit. And because of that situation and the fact that Tom Brady is gold in the clutch, I just think the Bucks are the play here. Uh, I took some three and a half already. Anytime that pops up, I'm going to grab it. Um, three, as you know, is the key number. It's 10% of the games, even more when for the favorite that is favored by three. So I'm just going to sit back, take some three and a half here. If I see a two and a half pop, I can't help myself. I love playing middles on the three count. So, uh, yeah, I like the Bucks here, but I'll probably be a middle opportunity for me. An incredible matchup, eh, Ball, with these two uh, future Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Who, who do you have in this matchup with the Saints and the Bucks? We took the Bucks plus three and a half early. The way I look at this game is uh, the Bucks. I think they have a slightly better offense. Their weapons are starting to gel. You look at the Saints, I think their defense is slightly better. So it comes down to the quarterbacks. I think Tom Brady's playing, you know, his best football of the season right now. He's getting his chemistry with all his guys, Gronk, Brown, Godwin, Evans. And Drew Brees, I feel like he's regressing. Each week I see him, I see the, you know, the turnovers. He's not able to throw, you know, over 40 yards or whatever. I think the Bucks plus three and a half is the right side here. The Saints have beat him twice this year, and it's hard to beat a three uh, team three times in a row. So I like the Bucks in this matchup. Billy Godfather, that's uh, almost exactly what I was uh, thinking when looking at this. It's tough to beat a team three times, especially a team that has Tom Brady on it and such a great uh, team of incredible all-stars uh, like the Tampa Bay Bucks. Who do you have uh, in this game? Again, this is another team I got futures on at 50 to one before they got Brady. So I really, I'm glad everyone, you know, went before I did so I can really hear everyone's opinion on the game. At first glance, if you look at this line, you say to yourself, I mean, all the Saints got to do is win by three points against a team that they squashed twice this year. And you're going to cash a ticket. It's got to be easy money, right? Uh, the Saints have the better overall record. They spanked, like I said, the Buccaneers twice this year by a combined score of what was it, 72 to 28 or 72 to 26. It was 34 23 the first time, I think 38 3 the second time. Uh, but as we all know, and as Dave Mason will tell you, uh, Vegas doesn't give out easy or free money uh, when it comes to betting the NFL. Uh, if you look, if you go back and look at the first time these two teams played, the, uh, the Buccaneers had more total yards, more first downs but they turned the ball over three times and they basically gave that game to the saints. Uh, the second time it looked like, you know, the saints defense knew what the Buccaneers offense was going to run before they ran it. And they just crushed them 38 to three. So now Vegas is basically telling you offshore is telling you that these two teams are basically a pick them. If they were playing uh, on a neutral field and if it wasn't in Mercedes Benz stadium, I'm just, I'm not buying it, man. I agree with Rooster. I agree with 8-Ball, uh, the whole crew. I, I'll take my chances, plus the points with the GOAT, with Tom Brady. I mean, Bruce Arians' defense is uh, almost as good as Peyton's. And their offense, I think, is a lot better than the Saints. And over recent play, I mean, Tampa's offense has been playing lights out. They're the hottest uh, team in the NFL. I think they're averaging right around 7.7 .7 yards per play. Everybody's gelling on that offense. And uh, I think the public's going to be thinking about those previous two games where, you know, Tampa Bay got spanked and they're going to bet them again. Uh, as Dave will tell you, the majority of the bets come in on game day. So I think this is, this game's going to be more tilted, more heavily uh, weighted with a lot more saints money on game day. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I know I got that future on Tampa Bay, but I'm not hedging. And I, I like Tampa Bay here plus the points. Dave Mason, I'll blame uh, CTE. I may soon be hunting Easter eggs I just hid from uh, <laughs> from all their concussions, but I think I skipped you on this, right, Dave? What, if I did, where'd, I, where'd you have the odds on this? Nah, you have CTE. We went over. But <laughs> Saints are minus three, uh, laying minus 159, the money line over under 52. Uh, the action's pretty split. 54% is on TV, uh, plus three, 53 percent of the action is on the Saints minus 159, and it totals 50 50. A man who doesn't have CTE but drinks a lot of Booms Farm, which may have the exact same effect as CTE, that is Mr. Harry Mason. Uh, 
swinging and dinging. What do you got in this matchup between wait, uh, wait, Drew Brees wait, wait. What are you and doing? Time out, John. Time out. You just called him Harry Mason? Yeah. <laughs> That's us combined. <laughs> Harry <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Our <laughs> love child. <laughs> <laughs> not not <laughs> Perry <laughs> Mason. <laughs> I'm getting drunk off Rooster. Right. Well. I'll, I'll be David and Mays. <laughs> Oh yeah, man! Hey, look, Dave Mays is fine. Harry Mason. <laughs> now, this is call actually Willie Mays next, John. We might as well call yeah. Willie Mays. Next. I actually don't <laughs> don't have a play on this. This is probably a game that I may jump in in game. I'd love to just take Tampa Bay because I think that is the right side. But at, at this point, I'm just going to watch you know these two great quarterbacks play for the last time. But a couple of notes: Devin White is going to play for Tampa Bay. That's big. He's, a, he's one of their best linebackers. Mike, uh, Mike Evans, we saw, had a, gra- a really good game last week despite the knee uh, being tweaked, so I'm not worried about that. Ronald Jones did get hurt, though. Uh, I think he hurt his quad, and uh, Fournette came in and d- did a great job for him, but he may need, need to do that two weeks in a row. But I, I would lean Tampa Bay here, but I'm going to wait and go in game. Matt, we have a unanimity here uh, among all of the guys. Do you, are you in agreement here about uh, taking the points? Tom Brady's coming. Okay, Tom Brady wants revenge. They're talking trash. They won the first two games. Rarely do you see a team beat their division opponent three times. Tom Brady's been done with his receivers. He's getting that chemistry finally. Antonio Brown, uh, Evans, all of his guys. And I think Tom Brady comes in here and he gets that revenge. Plus three and money line, I believe. I think they won the game. You might as well bet the alternate line, John. Tampa Bay alternate line. What You got an alternate line, Dave? What is it? Uh, minus three and a half, what, plus like 250 or something? Uh, not yet. They'll be up uh, tomorrow, I believe. The alt lines go up. Last week, if I remember, Philly got better. You also gave out the, uh, what, the Cleveland Browns money line too, right? Yeah, I mean, you guys thought I was nuts. But, yeah, we gave out Cleveland money line. And I'm glad because Colin Coward was on the other side. And uh, <laughs> I just love when I'm on the other side of him. Man. I just do so much so well when I'm on the other side. <laughs> Well, there you have it, guys. There is follow the action, but we got a little special bonus for you because I understand of watching uh, Twitter and keeping up with the Philly Godfather, there's a big bet on a God bless Texas future. I'm going to bet them anyway, just because they're from the state of Texas. And that is uh, Philly Godfather. I'll let you tell it. What do you have in the college uh, basketball? I know that made you happy, John. I found a great price. I was down the oceans, 25 to one on Texas. Here's a team that beat Kansas in Kansas. Uh, ranked team. He beat, they beat West Virginia in West Virginia. The only game they lost all year was to Villanova. Uh, but in that game, they only got to the foul line six times and they missed half their foul shots. This is a 73% uh, foul shooting team while Villanova got to the line 19 times. So it was something going on in that game or else they would have beat Villanova. They got a tough game tonight, Texas Tech. Uh, but this is a team I got ranked fifth overall in the country. Uh, great defensive team. Shaka smart. You saw what he did uh, with those VCU teams. He took one of them to the Final Four, I think, uh, with a bunch of kids that didn't have the physical ability. Now he's got some talent on this uh, Texas team, uh, one of the best defensive teams in the country. They run at a slow, methodical pace that I like. They don't rush their shots. Good free throw shooting team, pretty good three point shooting team. They got size. They got four, te- four guys on this team that score in double digits, so they distribute the ball real nice. One of the better uh, uh, rebounding teams in the country. I think they're ranked 24th in the uh, rebounds per game so this team is built to take you know make a long run now Baylor and Gonzaga they might be a little better but if all the moons align like they did for us a couple years ago when we had Texas Tech at 85 to 1 uh, we might be able to cash a ticket or at least hedge late you know if they get to the final four or the elite eight we got robbed last year with Dayton we had them at 100 to 1 and uh, you know by the end of the season they were number one seat so I really like Texas I know that makes you happy God bless Texas (laughs) <laughs> God bless Texas. It is a great day for Texas uh, basketball. We got rid of James Harden and our godfather, the Philly Godfather's betting on our Texas Longhorns. So that's a good day in the state of Texas. Now, if we could just fix the horrible football system, <laughs> we did get Sarkeesian. But, well, you uh, got Sarkeesian. Yeah, we did. And that is a, that is a coup. We thought the Houston coach was going to be the guy. It turns out he wasn't, but Sarkeesian, I think is uh could be the right guy for the Texas Longhorns. Do you like that move, uh, Harry Mays? Yeah, I do. I really do. You saw what he can do with uh, with talent. There's talent. He doesn't have to leave the state to get talent. Uh, all they have to do is get a quarterback that can distribute, and he'll, he'll dial up the plays. Well, there you have it, guys. There is follow the action. There is your NFL. There is your PGA. There is your UFC fight night, a little NBA thrown in, and a college basketball future. 
for the best combat sports handicapper in the world, Mr. Joey Odessa. Best gambler in the world, Philly Godfather for the legend, the Philly Rooster, still drinking his wine, and Mr. Swing It and Ding It, best pod, golf podcast on God's green earth, Mr. Harry Mays, not Harry Mason, and the two uh, who are the future of sports betting, Matt Maltepis and the eight ball, and Mr. Dave Mason from Bet Online. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great week.